I'm Diana Tarasi, and I'm just a kid from Chino. My father's originally from Italy. My mother's originally from, from Argentina. About 30 years ago, they moved to, to Los Angeles. We were about eight years old, then we moved out to Chino. Well, Chino's just a cow town, basically. There's not a lot going on here in Chino. We would go to the football games, the house parties, uh, you know, the backyard boogies were like the big thing. Chino is a, it's a hardworking blue collar place um, and it's a really diverse city. And I think D does reflect that. Growing up in Chino was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. More than anything, it was, it was home in my house. Dad went to work every single day, you know, six in the morning to six in the afternoon. Even when he was dog tired or sick or, you know, he'd cut a finger off at work the next day, he'd go back to work. He's just not doing it because it's fun. There's nothing fun about that. That's what they had to do at the time. That, that always resonated with me that, you know, no matter what happens, you go to work. Soccer has always been usually at home, the number one sport. My dad, any second that he wasn't working or playing with us or taking us to practice, he was watching soccer on TV. I just remember, you know, going from the soccer field to the basketball field, still having my shin guards on. Dee's always been the easygoing one, and I've always been the crazy rebellious one. My sister was a little punk. She was two years older, so we had two years together. She got thrown off the team. It was a summer league game, and she got a foul called on her. She turns around and just moons the ref. When you watch Diana play as a sixth grader, seventh grader, right in that age group, her feet were unbelievable. She played basketball like she was a soccer player. Everyone would always want to come watch Dee's games because she was just the best one on the team. So she started basketball, and I say it's impossible for us to take it to the practice, you know, because sometimes the practice is together and it's impossible. And I tell Diana, I go, you have to pick one, or soccer or basketball. That was actually one of the probably the toughest times for Dia. She really just knew she had to make a choice and she just wasn't ready to give up soccer yet. She didn't want to let my dad down. One night she say, Daddy, I don't know. She play basketball or play soccer. Well for me, the best is basketball. You have a more opportunity. I see Diana in basketball, something special. Just think that that made her focus even more on her sport that she knew she wanted to play. Soccer was, was becoming really popular, but I, I think there was more of a future in basketball. Well, I got my first letter from Walla Walla Washington Community College in eighth grade, I'm not lying. And I was like, that's where I'm going. That's, that's my school right there. That's my school. And then after that, it was just like, you know, every single day, go to the mailbox, 10, 12 letters. And she'd spread them all over her bed. And the look on her face, I was like, oh my God, she's, she's gonna do this. But then when Gino showed up, my mom just started crying. She's like, this is it. We're gonna lose our baby. She's gonna move all the way to Connecticut and I'm not gonna see her for four years. Oh, it was frightening. I mean, I'd only seen him on TV. I'd only seen him, you know, in his environment. And uh, at the time, they were just taken off. We walk in, and I could start to sense that, you know, it's kind of like something I'm familiar with. You know, um, you know, being born in Italy and coming over to this country, and Mario, kind of the same way, you know. You know, once they started drinking wine and, and speaking Italian and. You know, my dad, if anything, he's, he's uh, you know, a little bit quieter, but he has a good sense of people, and uh, he was like, that's where you're gonna go. He's probably the only coach that came into my house and, and challenged me. I think when you're a great player, the last thing you want to hear is you're a great player. They already know they are. What they want to hear is how are you gonna make me better? And that's the way I approached it with her. If you want to become something completely different, then you need to come to Connecticut. My transition from high school to college was um, really difficult. We got to the, to the final four, we played Notre Dame. Um, we were up 18 going into the halftime and we ended up losing that game. 
Uh, and personally, I had that was probably my worst game of all time. I went like two for 15. The biggest game of her life up to that point, she couldn't deliver. And it, you know, it really, really stung. It's a very sad moment for her and for us too, because it's not funny to see your daughter, you know, cry on the bench and you can go and say nothing. You have to stay there. We had a team meeting, and you know, and I thought coach was going to be like, "You guys tried." No, he just went down the line and pretty much just ripped every single person. We all walked out of that locker room so angry that we started the mission right there for the next year. That summer, there was a lot of a uh, lot of time spent in the gym and a lot of time just working on a mental approach to the game. When we won in 2002, everybody knew we had the most talent in the country. That might be the best team ever in the history of college basketball. The first one was amazing because it's like anything. You're, the first time, you don't know, you don't know what to expect. You don't know about the parade the next day. But what she did her, her junior year and senior year, there's no one that started a whole new starting lineup from the year before and has taken their team and won the national championship. She did it twice. That's as great a feat as it ever happened in college basketball. Three college championships, three Olympic gold medals, three WNBA championships. That's what kind of told me the breadth of what she's really accomplished. We go to a lot of kids' homes and where you grow up does have a tremendous amount of influence on who you are. Growing up in China was it was home, and it still is. I still drive out there. I still, you know, once in a while spend the night, and I'm in my bedroom I grew up in. There is a certain pride of 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 being from there and, and making it. I make sure to always mention it because uh, that place shaped me.